and he has an inspirational story. Bishop, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning. It's a pleasure to have you here. Same. What's your pleasure. story? What's your story? When they say liberated behind bars, what exactly are we talking about? <laughs> well, you know, um, in 1992, uh, the U.S. federal government convicted me of a crime um, which up to this day I still um, continue to say that I was not guilty of that crime. What crime was this? A conspiracy. Um, you know, I was not a, a saint on the street or nothing like that. Back then I was still notorious but that particular crime was not what, was not what uh, I was supposed conspiracy to. Conspiracy to do what? Well, conspiracy had evolved the uh, arms and uh, <laughs> narcotics mm. and arms. But, uh, um, you know, I guess it was a way of getting um, uh, us off the street, which when I say us, me and my brothers, but... Um, the crime that I was convicted of, you know, they gave me a, a choice mm -hmm. uh, whether you plead guilty to a lesser crime mm -hmm. and we keep you in, or you go to trial and we give you the death penalty. Okay. So, which one did you go for? I had to choose the lesser crime mm -hmm. because I had, I believe that even though, I mean, I was, no, I was innocent of that particular crime, mm -hmm. um, there were appeal, appellable issues and issues that could uh, eventually vindicate me. You said you were notorious. So what, what were you notorious for? Well, when, when I say notorious, back in those days, you know, um, I was, I was, I was, um, I was on the streets. You know, um, I, I was not a good guy. In Yankee. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, what I'm saying is that, um, uh, you know, uh, the lifestyle that you know you want to you want to meet the Joneses and live a lavish lifestyle mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, you get blind, and um, but the feds, the government, they wanted me because they're my brothers, because they they're looking at why are these black kids from? How come these black? Uh, where are they from? These are Africans, mm -hmm. and which city? Which city? Um, in the New States? York City. Okay. So you were you born and raised in the, in, in the states? I right after Achimota, I went to the United okay, States. Okay, which house? Um, Livingston. Okay, <laughs> that house, former brother, my brother's houses. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you were put inside for how many years? Well. Uh, Initially, they wanted to give me the death penalty, mm -hmm. and um, um, actually, you know, it was in there that I, I gave my life to God. Mm -hmm. It was in there that I gave my life to God, and um, from two, 1992, I was in there for quite some time. In fact, I went to, uh, I graduated Bible school from in there, and I used the time wisely. Um, I studied... Um, you know, I was able to complete my law. and um, Inside the prison? Yes, I did. What's prison well, like in America? Mm -hmm. Well, the federal government is like, it's a rehabilitation. You know, it is not like a... a not like we have here in Israel. No, 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 completely different. Mm. It depends on the individual, how you want to stay. Uh, you stay out of trouble and you want to get educated, you want to have a life, you want to study something, you want to, you know, uh, you are giving those... Cha those um, so it's a whole society in the prisons. Yes, it's a whole you, you get to um, work jobs and, and get paid. Yes, you do. You get to work, get jobs. You 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 know, like like with me, I started my ministry from the prisons. What changed? You said that that was where you gave your life to God. What what changed? Well, the father of um, you know, at that time, I came to my wits end. I, I I realized that you know there was a group like we we have like in the United States we have the West Coast and the East Coast, and they were gang affiliated. And I was supposed to be uh, nominated as a shark caller, what you call a shark caller, or the head of an East Coast gang. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was at that time when uh, uh, once you are initiated, that means that um, your life. It's no longer yours. Mm. You, are, you, you die for the gang. And you talk for, about your brothers. Were your brothers jailed with you? Yes, they were. Are they still there? They are all out. They're all How out. many of you? Yeah, we are three. They're like blood brothers? Yeah. Wow. Where are they now? Where are your brothers? Oh, they are out. One is still back in the United States, and mm. one is with me here. Mm. Mm. What does is, what is the other one with you here do now? Oh, he's into uh, business and stuff, but he, he, he assists me in my ministry also. 
What was the toughest thing of being in jail? Well, the fact of the matter is that <laughs> prison is not an easy place. Especially, you know, we are in a place where every day people are getting killed. You know, you see murders all around you. There's racial violence. Mm. Uh, and then you have gangs. And uh, uh, it's, it's like a war daily, mm. on a daily basis. Uh, what, what picture is this? Where are you? This is a picture of me in Odisville, New York. Uh, that's my two kids. Mm -hmm. My sister, Promise mm -hmm. Down. My other, my, my other sister is a police officer in New York. Okay. Now, and I lost my older brother. Okay. They came to visit. So well, you're there, right? Yeah, I'm there. You're in the T-shirt? It's the white one. T-shirt. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, it's a jail uniform? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were, this is, you were in prison? Yeah. Okay. After how many years did they take this photo? I mean, how long had you spent? About two years. Okay. All right. Uh, what was the impact of, of your incarceration on your family? Well, it was very devastating because I lost my mother and my father through that, mm. you know, while I was still there. Because, you know, they knew that I was innocent. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. They knew that I was innocent. And... Um, they did everything they could. But the United States, what I found out is that, you know, it was God who shut the door on me. Mm. It was not man. It was not man. You, you thought that it was God's own way of getting you out of, or off the streets? Yes. And, and, and bringing you to the, the point where you find yourself now? Yes, definitely. How much does it hurt you that you couldn't, were you able to see your parents buried and everything? You didn't go no, to that, that is the most painful part of the old hotel is that I was not able to carry my father's coffin or my mother's coffin uh, when they passed. It was very hard, but I accepted it because God comforted me, you know. God comforted me. And at that time, I knew the Lord, and I was doing ministry work. Um, I, was, I was teaching Bible studies, mm -hmm. and I was uh, doing law work, uh, helping other inmates to attain their freedom. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm sure you cry when you think about it sometimes. Well, I think God has refreshed me. Mm. God has refreshed me because um, I, the way God opened the doors for me and how I came out and today I'm being able to help people mm. uh, make me know that, you know, it was all in the plan of God. When did you come out? Yeah. At 208. Wow, so you were wow. there from 92 to 208. Yeah. That's 16 20. years of your life. Yeah. Wasted? Not, not wasted. Why did you say that? Because, um, you know, <laughs> when you say wasted, I think that, what, 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 you know, the word wasted is a little too harsh because there I was able to achieve so much. What did you achieve? Well, not only um, uh, coming out as a, as a man of God, um, but it taught me so much mm. and how to deal with people. And I got connected with some good friends, real good friends. Mm. I, I know that um, you, you, you do a lot of charitable things as well. Um, yes. What happened in Darfur? There's okay, a story yes, of like you. with the Darfur, I was able to, one of my friends that was there was well connected to the leaders of Darfur. Okay. And uh, it had to do with the prisoners being released and uh, in fact, uh, the, the, How what, many of them? 500, 500. of them. What happened How are you is, able to do that? Oh, yes. And it was so strange because it was, you know, that was the work of God. These are things that God does, not man. Because uh, the president, the, the, the government of the United States could not even achieve that. And it was through uh, another inmate that was in the prison who had links mm -hmm. to Dafo. And through talking to him and being able to convince him and let him know that, look, this is the right thing we can do. And so, and after certain prayer sessions, he just comes to me and said, you know, and we get some of the people in to visit us. And we arrange it. And the release is made, 500. Exactly what did you do? I mean, we were able to convince him, talk to him, oh. play with them. Uh, one of them, even uh, one of the inmates gave some money, donated some money mm. to 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 you know, arrange that. Okay, so from prison now, so what exactly do you do now? Okay, right now, um, with the ministry, Lord mm. Squad ministry, mm. and um, I'm focusing on, now on the mentally challenged. Mm. Why? Um, you know, uh, a lot of good friends that I had, and even my family members, I noticed some of them were mentally challenged, mm. and it really touched my heart. Mm. 
that you know nobody is listening to these people and uh, I do all my possible best to mm -hmm. assist them give them a word be a blessing mm -hmm. um, donate to them mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, just be a voice to them. They need somebody to listen to. Indeed. So do you organize like prayer camps? Yes, we do. Sessions? Uh... We do. We offer prayer camps. Uh, we have a prayer house and a prayer office which we pray. Mm. And uh, Accra Psychiatric. Is that a picture can... of you? Yeah, there? that's a picture of me at Accra Psychiatric. Okay. Um, donating and sending them books mm. and uh, donating, donating certain items to them yeah. mm. to be a blessing to them. Are you bitter with the U.S. government? Well, the word bitter, well, I, Obama is my man, so I'm not worried about that. I'm not bitter. Obama is... Mm -hmm. uh, He's going is, out soon, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, yeah. but uh, you know, bitter, bitter. Um, I believe that the word of God has cleansed me from all that, mm. from bitterness yeah. and anger, because uh, I studied the word, mm. you know. I studied the word so much, and I, I, I just filled myself with the word of God. So that is so, so, so you're forgiven. Mm. Yeah. Are you able to go back to the states? Oh yeah, I can go. But usually, I like I, where I usually travel to is Mexico. Okay. Because what? good of my, my good friends are there, mm -hmm. and um, mm. I've been made a vice president of a company there. So. Trump wants to build a wall. Mm. Yeah, he cannot. <laughs> You'd have to <laughs> climb over that wall before you know you can. cannot. <laughs> What's your word? Uh, Father's Day is yes. just around the corner. What's your final word for? People in prison, they're watching us. Uh, people who are mentally challenged, people who are on, on the rough side of life and are looking for a way out. What's your message? Because you've well, all of that. Yeah, I, I, you know, like I tell them is that, uh, you, know, in, in, you know, it's not over until it's over, like we said. The, the, those in California will tell you until the... the fat lady. Not the fat lady, <laughs> unless you kick the bucket. Okay. Mm. <laughs> when the bucket is kicked, then the water is spilled. Mm. Then it's no more. Then it's over. Okay. But um, I just want them to know that there's hope. Okay. There's hope. Mm. Because in the Bible, what, what really gave me encouragement is Job 14, 14. It says that, oh, that you will hide me in the grave mm. and keep me in secret. Mm. And when your wrath is passed, that you remember me. You understand? Mm. All the appointed days of a man's life. He mm. says that he uh, it shall, it shall, uh, shall wait mm. till his change come. Amen. You need a change. All right. Mm. So I just encourage them to wait for their change. It's gonna Don't come. rush anything. Mm. You know? It's going to come. It's going to come. What would you have told oh. your dad today, uh, on Father's Day? Well, man. My dad? <laughs> what would you have told him? Yeah. Father's Day is on Sunday. Man, Dad, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry of what happened, and I love him. He's a great man. I truly love him. All right.